Okay, in this video we're going to talk about exporting out of Adobe Animate. So one thing that you're going to want to do before we even get started on this is just make sure that you have Media Encoder installed on your computer. So I'm using Adobe Animate 2023 and make sure that you have Media Encoder from the same year installed. It won't work if it's like one's 2022 and the other's 2023 usually. So that's the first thing to do right here. So second off, we've been working on this demo right here off of this demo. And you can see I've been trying to keep all my files kind of organized in here, right? So I have my FLA files, which are my Adobe Animate files. And I have audio. I've imported my turnarounds. You can see I have my turnarounds in their own folder. And one thing I really recommend is just making an exports folder and then exporting all your movies into this folder right here, just so things don't get too overwhelming. And um, that's just a little bit of advice I have right there. OK. so. I'm going to open this existing project right here. And so right here, there's two factors about this animation that will make it um, so it won't export correctly unless we make some changes and animate. So the first thing is you can see my animation goes from frame 1 right there to frame 40. And then once we go to frame 41, the animation is over. But you can see that I have this audio file that's going, is continuing to go all the way to frame 95. But I don't want to export this stuff, right? I just want to export the range from 1 to 40. And Animate is going to want to export the whole thing. And so we're going to have to tell Animate, no, you know, only go to frame 40 right here. So that's one thing we're going to have to tell, to tell Animate. The other thing we're going to have to tell Animate is you can see I have a bunch of layers right here. And a lot of them are hidden right now. I have you know, things like turnarounds back here that I was using for reference um, or showing you how to use for reference. And I have them turned off. Animate by default is going to want to render your movie with all of these hidden layers as visible. So we're going to have to tell Animate not to do that. So let's, let's get this started. And that will be the first thing that we do here. So the first thing we're going to do is tell Animate not to export hidden layers right here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to File. And then down to Publish Settings right here. And there's only one thing we're going to change under File and Publish Settings is this pop-up window is going to come up. And we're going to go find Include Hidden Layers. And we're just going to turn that off. And I'll press OK. Be sure to press OK after you do that. And so now it'll just render what we see, which is great. Um, I feel like that should be the default, but that's just my opinion. So that's one thing down. So now let's start to think about exporting this. And so I'm going to show you a few different ways to export your, your movie file here, depending on what you're hoping to do. So I'm going to show you how to export it as a QuickTime so that it's, or sorry, an H.264 QuickTime so that it is um, something that you could just upload as a finished product onto you know, YouTube or whatever place you want it to be as a finished product. Then I'm also going to show you how, later how to export as a PNG sequence with alpha channels. And what that's going to enable you to do is import it into a, a compositing program like After Effects or something like that. So you can add color correction and put backgrounds into the scene and kind of do more with it later. OK, so let's do the, the first of those two options where we just export this um, 40 frame animation as a finished H.264. So, we had already gone to Publish Settings to kind of change that one setting with the, the hidden layers, right? And it saved those changes because I had pressed OK before. And so now we're going to go to File and Export. And then we're not going to go to Export Movie. We're going to go one below that to Export Video and Media right there. Oops. So Export Video and Media. And you can see there's a lot of options right here. And there's times where you might want to use some of these other options. But today, I want to just focus on these ones right here. So export video and media. And so we're going to have these options come up. So we're going to start from the top and go to the bottom right here. And my screen might look a little bit different from yours because I ran through this once before recording this tutorial. So we have the render size. So hopefully this should just be 1920 by 1080 right there, assuming that you had worked in 1920 by 1080. So we shouldn't need to change that. So right here, we have the first option. So we have the option that we can enable where it says ignore the stage color and generate an alpha channel. And so if I have that clicked, that will be useful later when we're exporting the PNG sequence, um, where we want this white background not to show up and we want it to um, be a clear channel. 
For a finished movie, if I have this enabled though, it's gonna take your character and put them in front of a black background. So if you render your movie, and later on you're out, you, you see the H.264 and your character is in front of a black background and you're not sure why, it's because this is enabled right here. So for this first option, I'm gonna turn that off and that's gonna make it so that this white background shows up when I render things here. And so next up, by default, it's usually set to entire movie, which would render your whole movie from frame one all the way to frame 95, which we don't want. So I'm gonna go and click on scene and we're in scene one right here. And so I'm gonna to wanna to render scene one. And you can see right here, you can set the frame range. So my frame range is gonna be from one to 40, that's great. And I'm, we have this other option to use time code, but we're not gonna worry about that for this tutorial. So just scene and then set your frame range right here. And so next we have the format. So under format, you're just gonna click on this tab and find H264. You can see there's a long list right here of different options. And then under preset, I'll click on this. And I think by on your computer, it'll probably look like that. Um, and what I like to do is I like to do match source high bit right, right here. That's usually a pretty safe, good setting right there. So it's just the very first option down, match source high bit rate. And so finally, we're almost there. Um, we're gonna set the location and the name for this. So I'm gonna click on this little folder right here and Remember, I'm, I'm putting things in my export folder, and I'm just gonna call this demo underscore version one. And I'll press save. And you can see this is enabled start Adobe Media Encoder Render Queue immediately. And so for anyone who's unfamiliar, Media Encoder Queue is um, out of After Effects and programs like Animate. A lot of times in order, these are, um, yeah, I'm stuttering here. So in Adobe, when you're exporting movies, this is kind of their movie creator app. And so programs like Animate and After Effects send their, their renders here and it kicks it out for you. So that's why I was saying at the beginning of the tutorial to make sure that Media Encoder is installed here. So it's just gonna start Media Encoder immediately once we press export here. So I'll press export and you can see Media Encoder is opening right here. And Media Encoder is gonna, it should automatically generate your render for you right here. So it's gonna take one moment to open up here. And let's just give it a moment. You can see up in this corner right here, this is where the render queue kind of um, occurs and you can see this rendered very quickly. And so, and it's just telling me that it rendered successfully. So I'll press okay. And then hopefully, and I'll close Media Encoder and go to exports. You can see demo version one, MP4. And I'll open this with QuickTime Player. And you can see it rendered with a white background and it's 40 frames long right there. And that's perfect, right there. And if this is a looping animation, I could set this to loop if I wanted to. And there's a lot we can do with that file. Um, you can upla upload it to YouTube or Vimeo, or you could bring it into an editing program and manipulate it. There's a lot we can do. So next up, let's open Adobe Animate again. And let's say that I want this character rendered in front of a clear background so that I can composite them into another scene. You know, maybe I've painted another background and I wanna use After Effects to composite it. So what I like to do is, um, there's a few options you can do. You can export SWFs and a lot of options like that. And what I'm gonna to show today is how to do a PNG sequence. So. This is gonna be really similar here. So I'm just gonna to go to file, same thing, export, and then down here to export video media. So the same place we were before, I'll click on that. And so now I want that alpha channel. So I'm gonna enable that right here. And we're going to keep the same options right here for the frame range. And so it's the second option and then set your frame range for how long you want your project to animate for. And so under format, instead of H.264, we're now gonna click on that and then find PNG sequence right here. And so anyone who's unfamiliar with a PNG, it's a really nice format. It's like a, um, it's a compressed file, it's flat. Um, it's like a JPEG, except for that it has the alpha, it can have an alpha channel embedded into it. So you can have transparency to it, which is really useful. So PNG, and then um, I go over here 
to there's default, there's PNG sequence where we match the source, and then there's PNG sequence with alpha channel, which is what we're going to want right here. So I'll turn on PNG sequence with alpha channel. And so those are the two things that I really changed, or three things. So I enabled this right here, so I turned that on. I went to, down here and chose PNG, and then I went here and chose PNG sequence with alpha channel. So three things right there. And now I'm going to set my location by clicking on this folder, same as before. So I'm under Dance Party, right, and I'm under Exports. And this is going to export a, a list of PNGs. So it's going to export 40 PNG images that um, we can later import into After Effects. So I need to make a folder for this to go. And so this is that's important just for organization so you don't get overwhelmed with all these files. So I'm going to click on this button right here that says New Folder. And then I'll just call this PNG Sequence 1. Press Create. And then I'll save that. So all my, my 40 PNGs will get saved into that folder right there. And same as before, uh, Media Encoder Q is going to help us export this. So I'll press Export. And I believe that already finished right there. Oh, here we go. So you should get this that says that it finished rendering. And so now when I check Exports, you can see I'll click into that. We have our MP4, which is an H.264 movie file right there that we had rendered before. And so right here we have this PNG sequence. And so you can see right here that it's um, labeled 0 through um, 39 uh, right here. And so it's 40 images, right? And the reason that it says 200 and 201 right here, by the way, it should, for you, it should say 0, 0, 0, 0, sorry, um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, etc. The reason it says um, 200, 201 and all that stuff is my project, when I was exporting it, I forgot to change it from when I was naming it. My project is called Demo2, right? So don't get thrown off by that, um, that 200. That's just me messing up right there. I should have deleted that right there. And then it would have been Demo00, zero, zero, Demo01, zero, etc. right? So what we have there is we have these PNGs, and hopefully they should be over transparent backgrounds. If you tap spacebar and you're on a Mac, you can kind of tell if it's transparent because you can kind of see a blurred version of your desktop underneath it if there's a transparency there. So as a final step to this tutorial here, I want to show you just the basics of importing this into After Effects, saying you wanted to, let's say you wanted to composite this into um, a greater scene right here. And there's other videos of mine that you can find on how to use After Effects and manage your project successfully and all that. And so I recommend you, you find those videos on this, the playlist here. But we're just going to go over the basics right here. You click right here on this button that says New Composition. Then under Preset, you just go right here to the very first option. It's 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. And things should get set automatically for you, but duration, you might need to change the duration. So this is frames right here. This is seconds, minutes, and then hours right there. So I just, you know, I probably just want this to be like 10 seconds long. So 10, and then the background color will be black, that's fine. So I have an empty composition here. So let's import these in. And so to import these in, well, we can just drag them in right here um, so I can import that is 264 just by dragging it right in. You can also, importing a PNG sequence gets a little bit trickier. So dragging it in might work, but what I recommend doing instead is just click right here and then go File, Import, and then File right there. And we'll be able to kind of opt for some settings here. So File, Import, and then File. I'm going to click on the folder that says PNG sequence. And this is important right here. So I'm just going to click on the very first image right there. And you can see it should auto automatically enable this where it's going to import a PNG sequence. And so what that means is that After Effects just sees that this is numbered um, in order right here. And so it's going to just bring all of these 40 images in as one sequence right here. So I'll press OK. And you can see when it came in, it had those multiple files right there. So it came in as a sequence. So let's just show this first. So I'm going to drag my 
H264 into my timeline right there, and you can see it just comes in right there. Compress right, I compress spacebar right here, and it renders out right there. And it just kind of renders once, and then we're done. I'm going to show you how to loop this easily here in just a moment, but I'm going to use the PNG sequence to do that. So PNG sequence, I click on it, and if I look up here, things look right, except for it's, it's telling me it's going to come in as 30 frames per second, and we don't want that. We want 24 frames per second. And also I want this to loop. Um, all right, you might want this to loop. I'll show you how to make this loop. So what we're going to do is before we bring it into the timeline, we're going to click on the PNG sequence right there, and then go down to this button right here, and it's called Interpret Footage. You can also right-click and find Interpret Footage here, um, but I like to just click on it and then find this button right here, and it'll bring up this window right here. And there's some settings up here we don't need to change. We want it to be 24 frames per second right here. And down here, if we look all the way at the bottom, it's set to loop one time. I'll press OK, but we're going to change this number later to have this animation loop. So right now, that's just set to loop one time. It should last 40 frames right here. And you can see this is over an alpha channel now. So one way you can see that as well is if I click this button right here. It's called Toggle Transparency Grid in After Effects. I can click on that. And you can see that it's over a transparency right there. And I can see that even further. Let's just kind of bring in one of my turnaround images just so we can kind of see this above. So you can see my, one, I have like a turnaround image underneath. And then my animation is transparent above it right here. So that's an advantage of a PNG sequence is that you're able to render your sequence and have your animation go on top of new backgrounds and things like that. So let me turn that off. And let's say that you have a dance animation that you want to have loop right here, right? It's just happening once and it's done. So one way you could do that, and this is not the way I recommend, is I can select my layer right here and press Command D or go up to Edit and then Duplicate right here. And then hold Shift and snap it and kind of keep doing that, right? Command D, snap. And then when I play it, it'll loop like this. But it can get kind of ugly, in the, or hairy in the timeline, I should say. And so right here, if we want this to loop, here's an easy trick right here. So I have my PNG sequence right here. So I select the PNG sequence in this window. Then I go back to that interpret footage button right there. Click on that. And you remember down here at the bottom of this menu, I had it set to loop one time. I could have this loop 25 times if I wanted to right there. And I'll press OK. And you can see now there was a hand there wasn't a handle here before. If I hold my cursor, I can now drag this and have it just continue to loop um, right here. So I can just drag this out. And so now when I tap spacebar or press this, you can see that my animation's looping right here. So if you had like a dance animation or a walk cycle or anything like that, you can have your animation loop on one layer so it doesn't get too um, messy in here. And since it's a PNG, you can do things like put your backgrounds underneath. You know, this background obviously wasn't meant for this character right here. And render your character this way.